All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Allison, and I am the Recreation Advisor with Horse Council of BC. And I would like to acknowledge that the land where the HCBC office is located is on the traditional lands of the Katsi, Kwantlen, Matsqui, and Semi-Amu First Nations. And myself and many others are attending virtually from other areas in BC. Therefore, I'd like to acknowledge all Aboriginal peoples on whose traditional territories that we're meeting today. And just some housekeeping before we get started. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for people to watch at a later date. We have everyone on mute, so if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box. And um, at the end of the presentation, we will take some time to answer your questions. And um, today I am here with Chad Newfeld, Manager of Parks and Planning and Development for the City of Maple Ridge, Lee Hughes with the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association, and Bill Jeffro with the Haney Horseman Association. And today they'll be taking us through the Thornhills uh, Trail Project in Maple Ridge, um, in which they worked collaboratively on. So uh, yeah, just before we get started as well, um, I have a couple poll questions, just kind of asking what region of BC you're in and um, what trail user you are. So before we jump into the presentation, I'm going to throw those polls up and give everybody um, a little bit of time to complete those. So just a moment here. And there we go. So I'll give you guys some time to go through those. Okay, perfect. So it looks like we're all good there. So I'll just close the poll. All right. Okay, awesome. And Chad, do you want to jump into your presentation? Sure, I would be happy to. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Hope you can all uh, see that. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, Thornhill Trail Network, um, our experience. And I say our because uh, I'm here with uh, Bill Jeffrey and uh, Lee Hughes. And uh, we're going to kind of pause and, and talk a bit about um, their experience as well as uh, the process that the city led uh, to ultimately developing what uh, like to call a, a multi-user trail network. And uh, so I'd also like to acknowledge that um, Thornhill specifically and, and the city of Maple Ridge uh, is situated on the traditional and unceded territories of the Keatsy First Nation, as well as the Kwantlen First Nation. And uh, I think it's uh, you know very important that we recognize that um, Thornhill is a, is a very special place and uh, it is on, on this area and this land here. Um, I'll briefly kind of talk about uh, the outline of the presentation today. So I'll do a bit of introductions. Uh, we'll talk uh, just a general overview of Thornhill and, and where that is, uh, some background and context um, before we kind of get into what process we led. Uh, we'll review kind of uh, our, our trail study findings. This is our, our public consultation process. Uh, talk a bit about our stakeholder meetings that we held and our follow-up community consultation round, and then um, what, what our implementation stage looked like, as well as um, talk about our next steps and, and what's still in store uh, for the future. And so, yeah, uh, introductions. Uh, again, I'm Chad Neufeld. I manage uh, Parks Planning and Development for the City of Maple Ridge. And we've also got Bill and Lee, and I uh, wonder if you guys wanted uh, to maybe just unmute and introduce yourselves and your, your organizations. <clears throat> Sure. So I'm uh, Bill Jeffroy. I'm the president of the Haney Horseman. I'm making the assumption that I can be heard here at the moment. 
I see Chad nodding, so I'm going to go with yes, I can be heard. Uh, I've been president for the last, I'm going to say it's two or three years since just before this process started uh, with the city. And obviously the Haney Horseman is uh, a local group that uh, works with all of uh, the, the different cities and the um, uh, provincial government around maintaining a historic uh, trail, the trail system. Thanks, Bill. Uh, and Lee, go ahead. I'm Lee Hughes. I am a member of the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association. Uh, the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association was founded in 2004. Uh, we have roughly a thousand members throughout the Fraser Valley, uh, more specifically 150 in Maple Ridge. Uh, we go kind of right from Maple Ridge all the way to Hope. Uh, so we have 13 board members who represent each uh, area that they kind of live close by. Um, we take care of trails. We are the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association, but we do take care of trails for all trail users. Um, we have done work. We have a uh, trail crew. They've done work on uh, hiking trails and different various trails throughout the Fraser Valley. Um, I mainly represent the builders. I came on probably about five years ago. Um, kind of, I think, kind of helped get the ball rolling on some of these processes. And then Chad um, was very receptive and got the ball rolling from the municipal perspective. Great. Uh, thank you, Bill and Lee. And so a bit of a background on Thornhill. I'll just uh, click this link. And if you're not familiar with the area, uh, it's totally fine. So just to, to orient ourselves, you know, this is where we are in the in the lower mainland. So in Maple Ridge, there's this big uh, kind of uh, treed area here that uh, we affectionately refer to as, as Thornhill. It's, uh, I guess, a relatively small hill. It's a about 330 meters in elevation. It's kind of in the east area of Maple Ridge. And it's really, it's a, it's good to recognize it is actually a second growth mixed forest. It's not uh, an old growth forest, uh, despite a lot of these trees actually looking quite old. It is a, a very, it was logged uh, back in the early um, 1900s or so. And I think one of the kind of interesting things is it's actually close proximity to a, a fairly populated urban area here as well. Um, a little old, old map uh, that we found in our, our museum archives, it's actually from 1859 uh, when they did the uh, sounding depths of the Fraser River along here. So you can kind of see uh, what looks like uh, a little hill there, and it's actually labeled Grant Hill. Uh, that is, uh, according to the, the BC Geographic Names um, Atlas, that is the official name of this, of this uh, feature. Um, the name Thornhill actually comes from an early settler, who was James Thorn, and uh, I guess he owned some land in that area and farmed it. And, uh, you know, eventually the south kind of side of, of this hill became known as Thorn's Hill or Thorn Hill. Uh, it's funny how kind of names develop over time. But anyways, that's what we've uh, been referring to it as. Uh, the north side of the hill is, is actually kind of more referred to as Grant Hill. So a hill that has two names. Um, this kind of shaded elevation map also kind of gives a good indication of um, the steepness of it. It's, it's definitely a little more gradual in steepness on the south side, whereas the north side um, drops off quite quite quickly and is quite steep in some areas there. Um, but, you know, this map kind of looks like a, a downhill ski map, and a lot of our maps do as well, you'll see uh, coming up as well. And so the city's involved in the city owns about uh, pretty close to 500 acres of this land. It's kind of shown with this red outline of the land that the city owns on Thornhill. Um, our official community plan designates about 80 of that, 80 hectares of uh, that 200 or so hectares uh, for park designation. But the re remainder, the, the very south portion um, being uh, designated as an urban reserve. And so that's land that uh, will at some point in the future, uh, may be developed or, or there'll be a, a separate area planning process to figure out what to, to do with that land. Um, the Crown Provincial Government also owns a, a good section or a quarter section of land on uh, Thornhill as well as uh, a couple other private landowners. And uh, continuing a bit on the, the background here, so uh, as Bill had mentioned, the Haney Horseman had uh, constructed and maintained a number of trails on Thornhill uh, through a maintenance agreement with the city, uh, which is 
kind of in, in years actually preceding when I've joined the city. Uh, I believe that maintenance agreement kind of uh, ended in about 2010 and uh, when the city took over uh, trail maintenance across uh, the city then. So some of these trails were the Bear Ridge and George's Way or George's Loop trails uh, that now form the network of city multi-use trails on Thornhill. And then kind of since 2010, there was a number of, of other trails, informal trails and, and um, other trails as such built by a variety of different users on Thornhill until about 2020 when this kind of process uh, kicked off. And uh, like I mentioned, I'd like to just kind of pause here and uh, give it over to Bill and, and Lee uh, to just comment on um, what Thornhill was like kind of prior to 2020. Uh, you know, it was, well, I'll, I'll leave them to, to share it. Um, you know, obviously we have our perspectives, but um, Bill, why don't you uh, kick us off there? Sure, so I'll, I'll go first. Uh, I think it would be fair to say that it was a bit contentious uh, on the hill, and, and you'll find this in a few spots of the lower mainland as more and more people look to do all the various recreational activities in what appears to be less and less space. Um, and there were folks both on in a lot of disciplines on the hill that have been using the hill um, informally together uh, for years. And I think we started to tread on top of each other as we were, uh, everybody was trying to do what they had done traditionally. And uh, I don't know, it was a bit like the the playground without the uh, the school supervision, uh, uh, taking care of the, some of the kids wanting to play dodgeball and some of the kids wanting to play tag and trying to do it all in the same area. I don't know, uh, Lee, if you agree or disagree with that general yeah, statement. I, I totally agree with that. Um, the one main builder that started up there, he started probably right after your guys' maintenance agreement ended around 2010, 2011, um, building the odd trail with him and his son because they had nowhere that had easy trails in Maple Ridge to ride. The only trails that were in Maple Ridge before were really extreme kind of mountain bike trails that you can't really take a learning uh, child to kind of learn how to ride. So I think before the agreement, the trails were relatively the same before this um, process started. I think uh, the thing that's changed a lot for us is the perspective. I think it was thought of that we were a bunch of teenagers, kids up there building trails. Um, but I think everybody started to learn that we are professional adults who have like a community oriented background and we want to just see things get better for our community in Maple Ridge. Thanks, uh, Lee and, and Bill. So just uh, mapping out our process and I'll touch briefly on this and then kind of get into the, the details here. So we, we kicked off uh, what we called initially a, a trails study. Uh, this is essentially a way to gather information and uh, some kind of background information and, and user data from, from various different users and of uh, trails in Thornhill uh, to really inform all the next steps. So we kind of built this process out as we went along. Um, I obviously didn't, didn't have this whole idea in mind when we started. Um, from that, we reviewed, kind of summarized all this data and engagement, and then uh, held a series of stakeholder meetings in about fall 2021. And then from that, we had kind of tentatively agreed on a proposed trail plan of, of how we would kind of designate certain trails on this hill. And then uh, we took that plan out to the community again and did a broad based kind of consultation process. And then uh, with some support of that, uh, started to implement the plan and, and signage and uh, various other things. So initially this uh, Thornhill Trail study, uh, we hosted two open house dates, uh, kind of mailed out letters to area residents, uh, people that owned land in that area, um, sent invitations to our trail groups and, and just really tried to promote this survey. Um, we asked a number of different questions. We actually, this is uh, still to date, probably the, the highest amount of engagement that we've got on one of our, our projects. We had about 800 uh, comment forms submitted, which is a pretty good number for us. Um, interestingly, there was, you know, but only about 72% of these were actual Maple Ridge residents. And so, you know, a significant amount, about 28% was uh, people coming to Thornhill and coming to Maple Ridge that didn't reside in Maple Ridge. And so that really indicated it's it's quite a, um, quite a, a big uh, tourist draw. 
Um, of those Maple Ridge residents, 43% uh, said they were hiker hiking users, uh, with 41% about mountain bike users, and our equestrian users at about 10%. A couple of other ones there. Um, we looked at various different questions on, you know, where do you access Thornhill from? Which trails are your most often uh, traveled? And how many times a week or, or a month do you go there? Um, all this kind of really good background information. I'm not going to get into all the details on uh, uh, these questions, but we essentially we asked uh, all the, the people that took our survey to rank and to say which, which were the top three most important trails that they used. And I'll show later on how we use this data, but it, it kind of formed the basis of our of our conversations later on, um, so that we could see well, you know, to equestrian users, these trails are the most important, and and these kind of routes are the most important. And so, um, you know, similarly for mountain bike users or or hiking, it wasn't as clear uh, for hikers because they kind of use almost all the trails equally. Um, but it was it was clear the differentiation between mountain bike users and equestrian users on on Thornhill. Uh, we'd also asked kind of teasing out some of these uh, improvement questions. So what kind of things would support you as a trail user in this area? We had a, a really big long list and kind of uh, summarized in in this little bottom infographic about better signage, uh, better parking, and increased maintenance. And then just overall, this is kind of what our, our infographic summary of, of the first kind of phase of engagement looked like. Of uh, you know, we also kind of wanted to understand the motivations for coming to Thornhill and why people wanted that experience. So meeting up with others, easy to access, you know, the trails are close to home, and uh, health and exercise are really top um, values for, for coming out to Thornhill. Uh, so like I mentioned, after we kind of had all this data, we set up some uh, some stakeholder meetings with the Haney Horseman Association and uh, Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association. Uh, through these meetings, we reviewed all the mapping of Thornhill, and uh, we really have a, had a trail-by-trail -trail discussion on uh, what we thought, who should be the primary user type for these trails. Um, we also wanted to confirm you know, the accuracy of all of our maps. Uh, up until this point, we didn't have a, a solid uh, city map that showed all these different trails here. And so um, you know, part of this process was mapping all of these informal trails so we could get a good understanding of, of where they were for one and uh, what they were called because we had multiple names on multiple trails, uh, which made this process a little bit confusing because there was a, a dual naming system. And then, yeah, the goal of this was to kind of establish and agree on a, a proposed trail plan that we could eventually take back out to the public. And again, I'll pause uh, for Bill and, and Lee to, to kind of answer this question is, uh, how did you guys find uh, this stakeholder meeting process? Um, what was that like for you and, and from your perspectives? You wanna go first, Lee, this time? Sure. Um, I, for us, I mean, it kind of confirmed what we already knew for usership on the hill. Uh, we had pulled data from other like websites like Trail Forks and stuff like that. Um, and we're up on the hill an awful lot and we see how busy it can get on weekends and we see hikers and um, yeah, that's basically it. So just confirmed our, what we have been, we were telling the city that for a while before the study began. It's nice to see that that was the outcome. Yeah, I, I thought the stakeholder uh, process was was actually very well done uh, by the city. There was some concerns that, to, to be honest, that we were going to come in and the city had a bunch of data and they were going to tell everybody this was the way it was going to work. And that was not the way that it uh, it laid out the, the city really was was interested in asking questions and getting feedback from both the groups and and they did a really good job of putting uh you know with the equestrians and the mountain bikers who would be the two biggest groups who probably had the most rubs between uh the the the, the groups on the hill in a room together with somebody to help us you know, find out what was important to us and what was important to them and what were the compromises that needed to be made. And um, I think there was there was a couple of sessions and then there was a, a couple of points where there was passion that came out from both sides because this was this was an important topic for both 
uh, both, both groups. And the city created an opportunity for us to have some feedback. And I don't think either group would look at it and go, we got 100% of what we were hoping to get. Uh, but I think what we got was a, a much better usable space for everybody going forward. So um, I was actually quite pleased with the process. Yeah. Right, uh, Thanks for saying that uh, more eloquently, Bill. That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like in 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 my real life in my job, that's exactly what I do is I let somebody else go first and then I clean up uh, in the end. I have no other real skill set than that. Thank you uh, both for sharing your your thoughts. It's uh, it's good to hear it from your perspective because uh, you know I know how it went, uh, but good to hear it uh, from <laughs> you as well. Um, you know, like like right back actually before we started into these meetings, we we even laid out some ground rules just because. Like uh, Bill said, you know, there was some passionate conversations around uh, <laughs> uh, certain trails, and and that's good to see that coming up because it means that people deeply care about this. But uh, you know, we still tried to be respectful, and I think we were, and uh, you know, we could have a good discussion. And so, kind of how we started off these uh, these stakeholder meetings was really looking at some of the mapping, and I'll I'll go kind of quite quickly through this. Um, so this is just an aerial image of, of Thornhill. We've got some some very faint lines in here that are the city's uh, old trail network. Uh, we showed you know here's the boundary of the city land. Here is our official community plan and how that kind of translates into to some of this as well. Uh, there is the city's old trail network or the the trails that the city was maintaining at the time. And then all the yellow ones are the informal trails. So the trails that the city was not maintaining at that time or didn't have, uh, um, just kind of considered them as, as other trails, we'll say. Um, we overlaid, you know, this is a, a map from the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association uh, showing kind of their uh, ideal of, of downhill mountain bike trails. And then that kind of more or less followed what we had as our informal trail map. And then Haney Horseman Association also had a trail map uh, right here. And, and similarly, same kind of uh, overlay of, of informal trails. So we had both groups kind of saying, oh, we've got all these other trails here. Um, they both show up on our maps. And, uh, and then it was kind of on the city to figure it out of where we go you know, along with our our two groups here of, of how we um, not separate this this hill, but um, how we all um, designate certain trails uh, to be certain types of users. Um, we also kind of harken back to some really old maps. I don't even actually have a date for this one, but this is an old, old uh, Haney Horseman pocket map that's that's laminated. They still have, uh, you can see actually some of these, these trails have been here I would imagine this map is even from the 80s or so. So there's some of these trails that have been here a very, very long time. And this one is uh, from 2010. Again, it kind of shows some of these uh, older trail uh, maps on here as well. So this is kind of the map that we, uh, we used for basing all of our discussions on. And uh, ultimately, we kind of settled on this as a proposed trail map. We color-coded it um, based on on user type of which which trail would be a primary user type, so a, a horse primary or a mountain bike primary or a, shale, a shared multi-use trail as well. Uh, there were a couple of trails that were uh, designated as pedestrian only. Really, those are, are quite narrow and, and steep in sections as well. So with that um, proposed trail plan, uh, we coordinated and held a, a second kind of public consultation uh, process. <clears throat> Through that, we asked again more questions around what do you think about this trails uh, proposed trails plan. We asked questions around you know safety improvements, what kind of how these trails could be more inclusive or accessible to people. Um, further, kind of asked people to prioritize the previous kind of list of improvements so that we could get a really good handle on um, what we should focus on as far as priorities for this. <clears throat> And we didn't get as uh, nearly the same amount of responses. We had about 200 and 280 or so comp forms back in. Uh, this sometimes happens with our engagement processes. We see a really high initial um, response and then kind of some people drop off or maybe aren't as interested to engage uh, in the second half of it. 
Um, but we did get some fairly good responses in 74% um, of people just thinking that this, this plan, this proposed plan will result in a safer trail experience. And 80% said that it would result in a more inclusive trail experience. So uh, those are really good numbers for us. Um, we felt confident that we could move ahead with this, with this trail plan. And uh, uh, also, you know, through this list, uh, through this consultation process, we confirmed that list of priorities uh, for improvements to Thornhill as well. <clears throat> so that was again clearly designating the trail user types, uh, formalizing trails. Uh, doing improved signage and wayfinding and improvements to a parking and staging area. So then it was on, uh, then we turned the corner into implementation. And uh, that's, I feel like where we, we hit a little bit of a road bump. We kind of got some people out on, on site and uh, uh, members from both groups kind of came. Uh, we walked trails a couple of times uh, looking for some of these routes that we had agreed on that, oh, you know, we need to build a, a little connector trail here or, or um, redo this one here. So it, it was a little more difficult um, actually on site and, and looking at the trails and, and things and figuring out how things would work. Um, but eventually we did uh, come to some compromises uh, which resulted in actually some new trails being uh, built uh, just to provide uh, equal opportunity to for different groups to circulate around the hill. Um, we clarified trail names. So up until this point, the trail names had kind of just uh, organically evolved and, and people had named trails. Uh, there was different trail names on, on various different maps, depending on <laughs> whose map you looked at. Uh, so we went through a process to clarify those trail names. For the most part, uh, we stuck with what the groups had already uh, uh, kind of designated or, or shown on their maps, um, but we did uh, change a couple ones just to more align with the city's kind of practices in naming things. Um, we put up some very quick uh, quick and dirty informal signage, or, or not informal, uh, interim signage here. Uh, it's just a picture here. Uh, didn't spend a lot of money on uh, graphic design on this, uh, I'll tell you that, but uh, they did the job for the interim while we could work through a, a proper wayfinding uh, strategy on this as well. Um, we talked about, we built some new trails uh, through some volunteer work parties uh, with both Haney Horseman Association and the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association. Um, one was a parallel route, so separating a, what was kind of a shared trail into a, a mountain bike and a horse primary trail. And then also a new horse trail uh, or constructed kind of in the, the bottom half of Thornhill as well. Um, we also started working on a, a maintenance agreement with the uh, Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association to maintain and, and kind of manage the, mount, the, uh, the downhill mountain bike trails. Um, Without that, it would have been uh, quite a big undertaking for the city to to suddenly take over. Um, I'm not sure it's probably about ten kilometers or so of additional trails, uh, which we didn't quite have the capacity to. So that was a, a key driver in in seeing the success happen as well. And we started looking at you know where could we possibly fit a a, a staging area or a parking lot um, at the point where most people were kind of accessing Burnhill. Um. Yeah, our, this was our kind of interim signage plan. I uh, looked at kind of some fairly quick and, and easy signage to just kind of get people starting to use the trails as we designated them um, while we were kind of in the process of working on a, a more permanent solution. I mentioned about the trail construction. So one of those uh, trails needed a, a bridge over a, a fairly small water course. So we actually used a helicopter to fly this in, uh, no small undertaking here. And then uh, uh, used a variety of different you know, work party dates uh, through both organizations to, to really create this along with the city's uh, assistance and kind of taking down some trees and dead trees and, and uh, you know, making it a little more safer route as well. This, I think, happened uh, mostly in 2022, summer of 2022 or so. Uh, we did lots of hiking. Uh, this is uh, some of our city staff out there uh, GPSing some of these trails, kind of walking these alignments to try and uh, you know make sure that we're planning these trails in the right locations. These are the, the new trails that we needed to build. I <clears throat> uh, wanted to be sensitive to you know where the natural drainage patterns were and and avoiding sensitive trees and, and ecosystem areas as well. 
Um, we did uh, onboard a consultant team and and uh, they were very good at working through um, all of the, the different signage and they came up with this uh, sign plan for us. So uh, some kind of bright colors, some uh, some really eye-catching signs that uh, and QR codes to link into an online map that you know if you're lost somewhere you can scan that and and uh, really find where you are on the map and and figure that out. <clears throat> they you know they did a a couple kind of humorous little things to make the signage not so um, not so negative but just kind of keep it positive, um, uh, keep it friendly and and attractive as well. Uh, they came up with a much better map than we had come up with. Uh, same map, same same um, designations, but just much more visually appealing, uh, which was great uh, for us because you know, what we had come up with in, in our working group session, our stakeholder meetings was uh, was a little more uh, rudimentary, I'd say. <clears throat> And uh, uh, just this spring or so, we had all these signs installed, uh, various different spots. So all the main entrance points across uh, Thornhill have kind of a, a bigger marker sign, uh, one of the first two images there. And then kind of major decision points have a smaller sign with uh, a lot of these trail identifier ones. Um, ultimately, we did decide to affix a lot of these signs onto trees. Um, that wasn't kind of our first uh, plan, but when we kind of saw the sheer number of, of these signs that we actually needed, um, uh, we kind of decided that maybe there was a compromise here that we could look at at a stainless steel screw or something that was non tamper that we could affix onto trees and then slowly um, uh, back them out as the trees expanded and, and grew in girth. <clears throat> uh, we were also working on our, our staging area, so our parking lot. We did uh, manage to find a kind of a small area of a of an unopened city road allowance there, right at at the base of uh, Thornhill on 256th Street. Um, this was kind of a an older uh, driveway, so we had to relocate a, a private property owner's driveway there, and but we're able to fit in about a 25 stall parking lot um, in this area. It kind of nestled between the creek and the road and and all the other things. It's um, otherwise, there's not a lot of room in this whole area just due to you know, the, the slopes and the, the water course that's there and everything too. But it has a, a pit toilet. There's no services out in this area, unfortunately. So uh, there's a pit toilet, um, uh, a horse hitching post and a, a mounting block, a little uh, pick table and a, a sign kiosk as well. <clears throat> and then uh, what's next? So we've, uh, this process has taken about three years. We started in 2020, now 2023. Um, what's next is we have committed to do a, a management plan. And really as, as part of a management plan uh, for Thornhill, we, we consider that really now that we've got a trail plan and, and kind of some primary user designations, uh, the next step is to think about how do we manage this in a long-term uh, way. <laughs> And so the things that that would consider is really environmental considerations of where are our sensitive ecosystems on this in this area, um, some engagement with First Nations. That's that's something that uh, wasn't included in this uh, initial process here. Uh, more staging and access points. So looking at other staging and access points. There's I think there's five or six kind of main points at which people access these trails in this area. Uh, looking at additional trail development. Uh, some of the things that we heard through the initial uh, survey was was a lot of focused on hiking trail development, so a, a Thornhill grind or something similar to the Grouse grind with a lot of steep elevation change and everything. Uh, there is a trail that's kind of called the Thornhill grind on on here. Um, I'm not sure that that's maybe the best alignment, but uh, it needs to be kind of further looked at and and from that kind of lens. And then also, you know, from a management plan perspective, considering. Um, what other events or programmed activities could Thornhill be used for um, and, and managed in a, in a way that um, still allows for all of these uh, great trail uses here. And uh, this is just my second last slide, I think. <clears throat> um, just talking or, or kind of reflecting back on uh, what did we learn in this process? And I think it's always good to take stock of, of what we learned. Um, you know, for me, I think I, I definitely learned the value of, of uh, keeping our stakeholder relationships alive and well. And uh, it wasn't just 
stakeholder meetings that we engaged with the Haney Horsemen and the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association. It was um, throughout all of these projects as well. And, um, you know, I think it was really important to see uh, leadership from both organizations and the, the willingness to work together uh, between them, as well as work with the city on, on these things. So we definitely couldn't have done it, you know, in a vacuum or without that um, buy-in. And I'll, I'll pass it over to either Bill or Lee, if, if you guys want to chime in on um, what did you learn or, or maybe just a reflection on this process. Um, well, Chad keeps saying how it's been a three-year process. Um, uh, from our side, it's been a, a little longer uh, canvassing the city, um, pestering the city, if you will, um, to get this process moving along. So for me, it's been five years. And for the trail builders that I kind of came in and helped along, they've been working on it for a few more years than I have. And I just want to thank Chad and the Haney Horsemen for the incredible job that Chad has done up there. Um, this isn't about what the Fraser Valley Mountain Bike Association wants. It's not about what the Haney Horseman wants. This is about what is good for the community of Maple Ridge. And I think what we've got going on up there is going to be good for everyone for a very long time. And it's we should all be very proud of what we've done up there together. Yeah, I, I, I echo what uh, Lee just said. Uh, it's very easy in your own discipline to get these blinders on and to make assumptions of what other groups want or don't want uh, to share or to do in these public areas. And in the end, it turns out everybody does really want the same thing, right? They want an opportunity to go do what they have a passion for, and they're not looking to stop somebody else from doing their passion. And, and they're uh, in, in this process allowed for the right result in the end, which is what Lee said. This is a great recreational area for the city of Maple Ridge in the end. Um, and it is, it's a much safer um, uh, set of trails than before because of the signage, because people can now show up and go, hey, I can go and do this activity here. And this is what I can expect to run into on the trails that I am on today. And uh, I think we've just created or the city has just created a, a really high class recreational area. And I've run into some, uh, some folks that are in Whistler and they know all about this. They know all about what's been done. They've heard through the biking community or through the horse community, all of these things. And they, it's actually drawn more people. Uh, Chad, I think you might find there are more people now coming in to use that space. Very good. Uh, I I have actually heard that, and and you know we've been engaging with our economic development uh, team as well, and and just kind of I've taken them up for a little tour, and and it's good to see that you know that their their minds are turning to this of of how we can use this to promote uh, Maple Ridge and and uh, you know all the amazing things that we have to offer here. Yeah, and, Lee and I haven't talked about this yet, but we're prepared to split uh, equally the commission uh, between yeah. the two groups that. The city wants to throw away. Of course. <laughs> and with that, I, I think it's an appropriate time to, to pause and uh, uh, take any questions or comments you may have. And I see there's uh, two in the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll start with uh, Karen's question. Um, is there any horse trailer parking nearby? And uh, thanks for that question, Karen. Um, there is a couple spots uh, along Thornhill that are probably more suitable for trailers, uh, not in the parking area that we we built. Unfortunately, just due to the, the um, where the pro where the city's property was and where the water course was, we're kind of pinched um, between a number of things there, so we couldn't actually accommodate a, a fairly large parking area for trailers. Um, but kind of our rationale was by by providing a car parking lot, we would hopefully that. Uh, people would park their cars in the parking area and then that the roadside, which is much more suitable for horse trailers, would be kind of available. Um, there are a couple other spots um, and the Haney Horsemen have a, a good map that kind of shows trailer parking locations as well. And then uh, Sheila had a question that said uh, horse manure on trails. Um, how much of a problem or issue is this? Uh, that is an interesting question. Um, you know, I haven't actually heard it come up too much with uh, within the context of Thornhill. Um, I have 
probably more heard to seen complaints around this on our, our dike trail systems, where it's a, mostly a gravel trail base. Um, I think because most of the trails on Thornhill are actually at like a dirt um, substrate. Um, so um, horse poo just in the, because it's mostly organic, it's it's grass um, and grains and that kind of thing. It, it biodegrades fairly quickly. Um, and I think people have just really come to, to just uh, accept that it's part of a, a, a trail that will accommodate horses on it. But, you know, occasionally there are um, complaints around this and, and I don't think even across many of the other municipalities here that uh, I don't think anyone's come up with a really <laughs> good solution for this either. Um, I see Kristen, uh, thank you for your, your comments. And uh, yeah, just uh, if there is any other comments, feel free to maybe unmute or, or ask us. I think we're open to answering anything. Um, and I might just uh, speak to like the horse manure on trails as well. Um, and we put out a magazine twice a year and I have the opportunity to write an article from a recreation perspective on that. Um, and I did go over kind of horse manure on our, on trails and everything. And um, just kind of from our perspective at Horse Council and stuff, it's when possible, um, obviously not every situation it's safe to do so, but it is good to get off dismount and remove, kick the manure off the side of the trail. So it just kind of clears the path for um, other users if it is a shared trail. Obviously we're not perfect. It's not every time you're gonna be able to do that, but just kind of having that kind of thought process in the back of your mind that if you can clear the trail of the manure, I think it's just kind of appreciated kind of all around, so. I see uh, Arlene has a question here. Uh, now that it's been implemented, have you had any feedback or suggestions from any of the user groups? Uh, yeah, I would say constantly and all the time. Uh, so that's good. It's <laughs> I don't know if it's ever complete. Um, we feel like there's always kind of small improvements that can be made or um, even just a couple of weeks ago, we were chatting about maybe some, some possible realignments, just, you know, people, uh, see how things are use, are are working and see you know where the the sight lines are and where the where the patterns of trail use are and are just looking at you know how can we avoid uh, potential conflicts um, and how can we you know ensure that there's there's safety and sight lines in uh, signage and so you know signage has been a, a good help um, it's also you know trying to ingrained in people's minds that people, especially that have been using Thornhill for quite a while is, uh, you know, they may not go down a, a trail that kind of they used to go down um, because that's, it's been, uh, the, the des designation has been changed on, on some of those. So um, trying to change some of those old habits is, is a little tricky at times too. All right, well, it looks like that was all of our questions that I see coming through. Um, but yeah, if anybody has anything else, feel free to ask. We still have a little bit more time here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Chad, Lee, and Bill for joining tonight and being able to share your guys' experience and everything. And I think it's a good opportunity just kind of for our uh, like horse community just to kind of get some additional knowledge on how these processes work and um, how it's like a good thing to engage with your municipality or regional district on these plans and um, just gives you like a good opportunity to get involved and um, you know the places that you love and are passionate about riding um, just to let people know that you're out there using them so um, yeah, that's really great. And actually, I just saw one more question come through. Um, could Haney Horseman share the map showing where I can park my horse trailer? Um, Bill, do you have? <laughs> I I uh, I do not have the map on me at the moment, but um, I'm sure what we can do is get you the map, and then you can share it as part of the link to this. Is that is that possible, yeah. sir? Yeah, I can definitely yeah. share it out um, afterwards. And um, we actually now on our Horse Council BC Trails database, um, we have a page 
um, for Thornhill as well. So we can even um, upload it as a PDF um, on there. As we're, as we're talking about it, Chad uploaded it. Oh, this yeah. is just, just so that everybody oh, else is quick and easy for me to. Yeah. Right. Just, just to be clear for everybody else, when we were asked to do this and we were wondering how we would come up with all of the appropriate slides, um, we just let Chad do all the work like the city has done uh, all the way through. And he did not let, I don't know if he, he certainly didn't let me down, Lee, uh, based on him doing all the work uh, and, and making it easy for us to participate in this. No, it's been a great process. Chad has been definitely the driving force um, behind it once he took on took it on. So, yeah. Chad. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah um, I, I did share the link to the uh, Haney Horseman map there. Um, it is a couple years old, um, but uh, the the second page has a kind of a blow up of Thornhill that has um, T symbols for trailer parking. Yeah, and and if you're looking for some more information on on Facebook, you can either go to the Maple Ridge Trail Riders page and ask that question, and then you're going to get many users that are going to go, "Hey, here's the best way, uh, best place to park." I actually don't have any good information because my wife does not let me ride uh, drive the truck and the trailer. She always drives and always parks when we go to Thornhill, so I'm not even paying attention uh, to where we end up. That's funny though. I'm wondering though, as a closing of this process, uh, that between the mountain bike association, we get you a, a mountain bike and a helmet and shoot you down your choice of one of those downhill bike trails. And then right afterwards, we could throw you on a horse with a helmet and you can ride. The best part is you ride up on the horse. You can come down on the bike, uh, Chad. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be uh, seeing it through a whole nother lens, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't his initiation into this process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all, all two legs for me. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of hiking up and down. Uh, that's all good. All right. Well, I guess if that is everything, um, we'll close tonight's presentation. So, yeah, thank you again, everybody. And, um, yeah, I just want to kind of encourage um, the horse community to um, kind of get involved in any of their multi-user trail associations um, and just, yeah, kind of keep tabs on their city or regional districts um, web pages for kind of projects that are maybe in the works. Um, and yeah, feel free to always reach out to me. Um, I'll maybe just type my email in here, recreation at hcbc.ca. Um, so if you do need any kind of like help or resources, trying to find who to get connected with or how that exactly works. Um, I can certainly help with that. And yeah, thanks again to our presenters and everybody taking time out of their evening to join us for this. And yeah, I guess everybody have a good evening. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thank you for arranging it, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for the invite, I was happy. Yeah. Thanks great. for inviting me. Yeah, it was great to have yeah. you. It was nice meeting everybody too. All right, have a good night, guys. Good night. Bye.